Hey, what is up guys? Anthony here with another video. It's been a while since I made a video guys, and uh, but it's for good reason. Um, I did get a ton of pieces in and I actually did make a couple videos, but I just never ever got around to posting them because I didn't feel like it was good enough. I didn't feel like there was enough pieces to really make a video, an amazing video. And I knew that I was at a point where I could get more pieces for you guys and really just have a absolutely tremendous video, which is gonna be this video. This video is, and I mean it, the craziest vintage video on the internet. It's the craziest thing I've ever posted. Um, and you guys are gonna see it firsthand. Um, so let's get into it. Sourcing for the past month, sourcing for the past couple weeks it's been crazy i've had some very good luck i'll be honest i've also just bought pieces kind of held off from really getting the sale um but you guys are gonna see it first man great video all right so we're gonna start off just a few pieces here this is a really nice 60s penn state short sleeve sweat flock print has some distressing on it and yeah, all these pieces are available on my ig you can see here the really nice flock print um and actually i i do guys read your comments is another thing i want to say i do read your comments and you guys do want a personal video i'm actually working on that right now making a like a nicer personal video and really just trying to update my uh video quality here i have like a the ring light i have a tripod now which i'm using to film um, so once I get, you know, that video prepared, I will hundred percent post it. Um, but for now, I really just feel like this video just, it's going to be crazy, man. So let's get into it. You probably see a couple of the pieces. I wanted to kind of give you guys like a little sneak peek, but, uh, just kind of some reverse weaves, nothing too crazy. Just chase a bank made in USA reverse weave. Another one, this is really cool. Local college, rare reverse weave. You don't really see a lot of uh, Florida State reverse weaves. Has his back hit as well on the 80s champion. If I did go to this school, I would 100% personal this. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, let's just get into just good luck, man. <laughs> this is just good luck entirely. This is just good luck, man. So first piece I got this FFA jacket um this is a little this is like a newer one but guys I never realized like the hype on these it's justified man these do fit like really really cool um there's actually a second one that's in my personal it's just because Umatilla is, is a place in around where I live in uh, central Florida and I just think that these jackets are really cool so here's the one that I kind of want to keep here it's uh same kind of thing has the buckles on the back here and it has this uh brand new tags ffa on it um i'm probably going to keep this one until i find an older one um but again i usually never stay true to my word and just end up selling um but for now it's in the personal so these two were found in the same day and then same day later drop i got this one and this is a, an older one, actually, but it's extremely small. But same chain stitching, everything. It's just a crazy story on how I've really never found an FFA jacket, like, anywhere, especially at the bins. And to find three in one day is just, that's just nutty. There you can see, like, the really cool chain stitching. It's on the, on the talon zipper. Um, yeah, screw it. I'll show this one off. So, I have this one. Not really sure exactly what era it is, but it does have the uh, wreath buttons on it, the 40s wreath buttons. It's just, uh, I would guess like 60s or 70s uh, denim chore coat. You see it has the uh, selvage lining. You'll see a lot of people say that these are 40s just because of, uh, I'll show you guys close, closer up at these, this button here, because of this wreath button. But the orange tagging tells me that it's probably closer to, I'd say even closer to the early 80s. Um, but it does have this too, and it's selvage. So I'd 
probably dated closer back to the 60s. Um, you can see there the United Garment Workers of America tag. This is just a really nice tour, really good size. Um, again, you get a closer peek of that selvage lining. But I could probably say it's 40s and get away with it, but part of me just tells me this isn't from the 40s. It's, it's a little newer, but just a really nice silhouette. Really like this one. So moving on to some other good stuff. So I'll kind of show these off consecutively 60s jacket has this really nice fur lining in it also has like this thing on it on the talon zip chin strap and it also really has this nice detail this pleating in the back which i thought was really really cool it's cotton it's not nylon um unzip this show you guys so yeah has a really nice like boxy fit to it has that zip in lining fur lining peters size 40 also got this one which is slightly older this one's probably early 60s and i kind of like this one more because it has more details it has this uh nice like knit on the collar and on the back it also has these uh adjustable like waist buttons which are kind of on the type twos as well and this one is on the conmar zip if you can see or conmatic whichever one but that's usually means early 60s on a lot of the champion running man stuff size 42 also fur lined uh also got this one same deal this one's nylon though still very old mcgregor uh chin strap as you can see this one's actually like a what you'd actually see on a lot of the really old stuff like just kind of the single button chin strap that you can kind of do um yen 60s talon zipper mcgregor nylon anti-freeze has this really nice uh wool like lining to it as you can see or not wool like this i don't know it's not like i don't know first thing we got <laughs> is this 1971 zip up varsity letter you never really see the zip ups and it's a huge huge size it's like 24 um pit to pit and it fits me like a glove obviously i don't wear i'm not wearing vintage right now this is just kind of something i threw on um but it's like actually a pretty big size it just is, it's obviously a little short, but that's just because that's how they fit back then. But yeah, you can kind of see it here. Like it's a really, really nice fit. Has this like paint splattering on it. Also has the back, it says Marmion, which is like a Catholic school, I think in Illinois, I looked it up. But yeah, oh yeah. And as you can see, it's also reversible. See the pocket right there. You can check out the zipper here. It's actually, this is the coolest zipper I've ever seen. It's like a double uh, sided Conmar zipper. I've like never seen this before or like a jacket this old. It's just crazy because you never really see or what's a lot rare is the zip up varsity letter. So when I saw this at a market, I had to snap, dude. This was like a crazy one. You don't, you don't really see. So a lot of the time guys, again, I'm diversifying, as I've said over and over again. I'm not just trying to do like biggie, 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 biggie. Biggie's the only grail I can curate. Like I could curate, you know, more stuff. As you can see, this one is just really, really cool to me. And I'm, I think I'm, you know, getting relatively better at it. Better at negotiating, better at a lot of things over time. So, yeah, just a really, really nice one. Very, very happy to pick this one up. So guys, the time has come. What time? It is time to sell my biggies, dude. Um, they're making it to the market. I know you guys are like, what? But I'm just being real. These are beginning to make me nervous, dude. Okay. And I'll show why. <laughs> so I just got them freshly repaired. And I really, the original intention for me getting them repaired 
was so that I would sell them. Okay. So I'd have a better overall, I'd be better off selling them. You know what I mean? So like when I sell them, I could sell them for more money because they have these like nice repairs done to them, all original parts. But I'll tell you why they're getting me nervous. So if we look in the back here, so that maybe even a light could show you guys what I'm talking about. But it's starting here. I think it's around this area. Can't really see it that well on here at all, really. But turn them over and show. So on the back seat here, and Alex, all close cool, was somebody who really did kind of put me onto this advice. I'm sure a lot of you guys also follow Alex. But biggies, what they start to do is the first place that they're going to wear, the first place that they're going to pop open is the butt. They're just going to do it. If you wear them enough times, it's going to wear out, wear out, wear out, and eventually they're going to burst. That's not what I want to happen to these. I want to keep them in good condition because once you repair the seat, and there's something that I realized, if you guys are looking to invest in biggies or anything like that, once the seat pops open, the value is cut in half. It doesn't matter if it was on its last thread and you started wearing them and they popped open, the value gets cut in half. People don't want all these repairs all over the jeans. They just want the jean, they want the wash, they want it for what it is, okay? Some people treat it as a collector's item, some people actually wanna wear it, but you're always better off selling if it does not have that issue. So if it does not have that issue in the butt, that is something, again, I'm making the conscious decision to just let these go. If I land another pair in better condition, better wash, I get more life out of them, then that's great, but I need to get to a point where it makes sense for me to do that. Right now, I think, honestly, I might be looking for repros. I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm going to do about jeans. I might just look for a nice pair of red lines. But yeah, Alex really was the person who gave me a lot of anxiety <laughs> about these. Um, didn't directly tell me. I just watched one of his videos and he was telling me and I was like, damn, like that's low key what's happening to mine. But I got this repaired. So there used to be holes here, but I got it blended in by a really um, good seamstress, uh, science and kindness. If you're watching this, man, you guys are the best. They also put back on an offset belt loop. I did get it like repaired at one point because the belt loop was, you know, broken off. As you guys saw, there used to be one here. It was a big, fat, dark, weird belt loop. I told them, take it off, make it offset again, and they did. So the jeans are back and restored into their original condition, which I really like. And it would just hurt me so bad if I wore these one day. I sat down one fateful day and they just bursted, dude. I just don't want that to happen because... I don't know, man. I love these to death. And if you guys want them, they are literally the best jeans I've ever seen. They are just the perfect wash, perfect everything. But one of those things, again, that I don't want to happen is for it to burst on me and me have to go through the process of basically getting like half of what I paid for them. So there's uh, also this like offset belt loop, as you could see. Um, but I'm still going to be asking a little bit on these, to be honest, guys. Uh, I'm not just trying to like pump them out, but yeah, I mean, if you're interested, they're 35 by 32. They're the absolute best size you can get. Um, we could work out a deal, but yeah, still got a lot of dark wash left. They are hemmed, but these are amazing, dude. These are just, the, these are the most amazing pair of jeans ever. I wish I could maybe... No, I can't zoom out, but I wanted to just show you guys. Yeah, again, I mean, these are, I know I've showed these off a thousand times on this channel, but seriously, guys, you can't get much better than this for, for 50s Levi's. <laughs> so let's move on, guys, to the ultra, ultra girl. That was an ultra girl, but stuff you guys haven't seen before, stuff I didn't show off on the channel. And I'll give you guys a reason why it's been so long since I've posted so here we got i know i said i was diversifying and then like right after i say that i have biggies but gotta hear me out guys okay so here we have 1947 model 501 i got these repaired again science and kindness did this amazing uh seamstresses 
got all these repaired. There's actually like a hole that went straight through the jean. I'm pretty sure it's from a rat eating it. I put these in the wash. Turned out fine. Nothing really happened to them. But this one is the best pair of jeans I've ever showed on this channel. So you can see it has the single sided tab here. So you could just kind of see the big E. And then here on the back, you could see the kind of arced V stitch. I'm not really sure, but when it has those two points, it usually means 47 model. See the buttons there. No mint stamp on the belt loop. These ones are 33 by 30. As you can see, relatively medium wash. Seat still has a lot of life in it. See here. So these would be a pair if you if you want like a pair that'll hold up structurally. I would go for a pair like this because the seat is still in great condition. You still get a lot of wear out of them. See the selvage compared to on my pair here, you could see it's a lot tighter selvage than the regular pairs. That's just how it is. So see also repaired up here. It was real eaten up, but yeah, just an amazing pair. Too. So, okay. So next we got another pair that I also got repaired. This one had a repair. The seat right here. This one was not a product of it bursting open. It was a product of rats. You see here, Big E still shining bright. Single sided as well. These ones are 31 by 31. So you guys, all the repairs. So this was actually an original repair right here. And then here we have, uh, it was missing a button, got replaced with the donut button. We have here, the fly was also eaten up. That all got done. Let's see here as well, stitching for the buttons here. Stitching as well right here. Yeah, but if you guys are interested in purchasing these, I would say be a true 31 because I think anyone, any buyer would be kind of nervous, but you want to make sure that these like buttons are not, you're not like squeezing it to fit it. You're sort of just like putting them on nicely, sort of like, you know, if you're like a 30, 29, whatever, these would probably fit very well on you. But yeah, these are also for sale. See, salvage, but I'd be a lot cheaper on these because of the the uh, button issue there then on my 47 model and these are also not 47 model these are like early 50s see here with the salvage as well yeah this is also beautiful pair of jeans man beautiful so to wrap this video up this is a piece that i'm like most excited about just because you guys probably saw it in the intro. This is a piece I'm most excited about, mostly because I've been looking for these for such a long time recently, and I haven't been able to find any for a good deal. I haven't really been able to found like find like an official one. The market on these right now is, the, it's literally right now, I would say the hottest item in vintage. I would literally make that claim. Like if you wanna talk about any item, like in terms of how accessible they are, versus how like the sell rate of them. These are the most sellable group of vintage clothing right now. And I think it has been for a very long time. Right now we have the infamous Lucy Peanuts Mayo Spruce Crew Neck, man. It's been a long time coming to get one of these, man. I've been wanting one of these for so long freaking long and just to hold it in my hand is amazing i bought it from somebody who had zero feedback and i can't tell you how many times i bought from somebody with zero feedback they end up canceling the order they end up deleting their account or something and i get like refunded but i'm happy to say this guy followed through this was literally just like some older woman who just created an account and she was just trying to sell off 
She, she probably had it in her closet. Maybe she started doing reselling. I don't know. But she had one of these available. Couldn't help myself, man. I had to offer. I'm frustrated, inhibited, and no one understands me. The classic. And the icing on the cake is a medium, but mayo freaking spruce, dude. All right, I had a call. Um, but yeah, let's continue looking at this. Uh, just a crazy one, dude. That tag is just, like I said, that's just, you can't get any better than that on those. Um, we got the overlock stitching. If you guys are not like 100% sure, what this is, it's just, it's one of literally the first sweatshirts that ever expressed the feeling. Because before, like, sweatshirts were all about, like, your job or the school or the sport you play. It was never, like, a novelty print like this, you know. But they did have, like, novelty crewnecks still, like, in the, I think they started in, like, the early, mid-60s. And they're about, um, like, being an alcoholic or being a college dropout or whatever. There's, like, a bunch of them. They're all like these cartoon, you've, you've probably seen them before. All this like weird, like cartoon guy, but yeah, just extremely excited to have that one. But guys, I had, I wouldn't call this my best, best find, but this is a truly amazing find that really just had me in awe. Um, I got from the bins recently. Um, I've already posted it on the gram, but again, like I said, it's been a lot of luck. I had those three FFA jackets come out one day. The day before that, these came out. Jack Purcell. Look at that. But guys, you're gonna be like, let me see this. Look at that. The earlier model Jack Purcells. They aren't, they aren't the 90s ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're like the well actually i do believe they're the early 70s ones because i don't know on what shoe it is yeah this shoe here this might have been right at about the time when jack purcell sold their model to converse you could see if there's a little star right there looking very reminiscent of a converse but there's a lot of bf goodrich boxes with a lot of these words on it, it says sanitized I think it says uh, posture foundation. It's real rubbed out, but that's what it says. And then on the back here, it just says Jack Purcell, Maine, USA. No claim to BF Goodrich, no claim to Converse. But yeah, they are pretty slicked out, but nine and a half, still great condition. I mean, not great, but fair, wearable condition. And the, the like bottom is still very much like gummy. There's no part of rot here at all because they were so well worn in and these were not like I think these were specifically used to the wear to play sports man and this is the reason I ended with this piece is because this is what it's all about man in my opinion you think about the history of this shoe how it got past the converse and the, and the wear it is today and also like why did they have them for this long why did they have two beat up shoes from the 70s for so long. And now the explanation might be simple. Oh, there was just, you know, in an attic and we found them, you know, when the guy passed away and just donated them. But it's still crazy to think that these were manufactured during the Vietnam War and they stuck around for this long, this obscure of a model, which was really, I think at the time, only used for athletics. And it was mostly used for badminton. I looked it up. Maybe they weren't used for badminton. Maybe the guy really liked the style, but it's like, we'll never know. You know, we'll never know truly what the history of these shoes are, what they went through, why they lasted so long, why they even ended up at Goodwill. But yeah, man, to me, this is what it's all about, dude. Finding stuff like this just makes the experience so joy so joyful. Yeah, but just an amazing pair of shoes. These are also for sale. Um, but yeah, guys. Wasn't lying, man. Crazy pieces in this video. So, like I said, we're getting better. We're expanding. We're trying to get more stuff. And those pieces will still come future videos. But like you guys said, I do I, I do understand what you're saying. I do need to diversify. I do need to start doing a, like personal collection videos, styling videos, things like that. Those are all to come into the future. But this is a video I just had to make. So... 
yeah, hopefully you guys liked. And if you're interested again in any of the pieces I showed in this video, my Instagram is at almost vintage. We're doing big things there. You could go shop with me there. DM me about anything you, you, you'd like to. I'm sure we can work out a deal. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Peace.